Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. We're gonna have some fun today and if you're new here, please subscribe and hit that little bell icon to be notified of future videos. Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I'm very excited to bring you some tutorials on owl paintings. Now, I didn't know how much I liked painting owls until I did some recently. And I'm also very excited because I am doing a little bit of a different format. So this is something I would love to get your feedback on. I realized I wanted to give you guys more instruction, more detail to things, uh, slow them down more. A lot of times a painting, you know, might take me an hour, two hours, and that's just too long of a video. So I have to speed it up in sections to make the file size smaller for uploading. And so now what I'm gonna be doing with these next few videos is breaking them up into separate videos and then I will combine them all as a playlist where you can watch the whole thing in, in full if you would like to. Uh, but this way I'll be able to not have to speed things up so much. I'll zoom in, I'll give you more detail and more instruction. I also, for these next few videos, I will give you links to the reference photo. I'll also try to provide you a little general sketch if I can um, to help you out if you're you know, just starting in a beginner. So that should be a lot of fun. Again, I'd love to get your feedback on that. Also too, I'm excited to see, I haven't even made an official announcement yet, but I started a Monet Cafe Google album. So you guys, the subscribers to this channel can literally go to the Google album. I have links in the description sections of the videos and you can upload your artwork. Now I know we have a lot of people on the Monet Cafe art group in Facebook. Um, I have my own Patreon page with my patrons where I get to see their work there. Um, I realize there's a lot of people who aren't on Facebook and you may just want to share your artwork so that it's not just me up here talking all the time. And so I've loved seeing what some of you have already submitted. Feel free to submit a picture of yourself and also I would love to hear where you're from and you know any other information about you that you'd like to share in the photos that you provide. Okay, that was a lot. Here we go. <laughs> This is the first owl painting that I did, literally just kind of chilling out one night while my husband was watching TV. I started an owl sketch just on watercolor paper. Now in this one, I'm just kind of going over the procedure. I, I then put some watercolor on it, and as I often do, I liked the watercolor, but then I decided I wanted to add more color with pastel. So I put my little homemade surface on it, started applying pastel, and kept working. Most of it was from imagination except for the owl and then I added some cute little fireflies. Now in this tutorial I'm beginning from the watercolor stage. In the next owl painting in another video I'll show you the whole process from sketch to finish. At this point this is just the watercolor uh, on the watercolor paper and here is the recipe that I have in another video. I'll put the link up here in case you want to see it in the upper right corner. And this was not really even a big batch that I mixed up of my clear gesso, which has some grit in it, and marble dust, a two to one ratio. I think I had um, half a cup of the gesso and a quarter cup of the marble dust. And it actually has gone a long way. So what I'm gonna do is, I, yeah, I'm gonna just paint this onto the watercolor paper. Now if I was to try to add pastels to this watercolor painting right here, I wouldn't get a lot of layering or I don't even think a lot of color. I feel like it, it's kind of flat unless you have a little texture to it. So that's what um, the clear gesso and marble dust is going to do. It's going to add grit to it so that I can get layering and texture. Okay, so I was kind of just describing things with my hands there. Now I'm doing a voiceover. All right, so it's time to apply the clear gesso and marble dust concoction. And I am going to speed this portion up. You don't need to see this whole process. Now I only applied one coat and as you can see it looks a little bit cloudy at first. That's because of the marble dust. If you use just clear gesso, which you can do by the way, it actually makes a very nice surface for pastel because of that little sandiness to it. Um, clear gesso dries a bit more clear than this, but this doesn't bother me because I I can see enough of the painting underneath and it's kind of like my road map with values and the basic structure um, of things. And here is my set that I so have been using a 
lot lately. It's the Unison 120 half stick set. Just look at all those color selections. Also, they're conveniently arranged in value, like your blues uh, go from a light value to a dark value blue with lots of neutrals, lots of bolds, and even some darks. All right, now here I am beginning to apply the pastel. And what I'm going to do here, this is what I was talking about in the intro, how I'm going to try to section off the video and zoom in so that I can talk. This is all real time. And what I'm doing is I know around a light source, it's going to be lighter in value around the light source. Obviously, the light is shining, illuminating, and it's going to gradually get darker in a circular way um, because this is the moon uh, light source shining out and uh, I'm going to get darker as I get further away and also usually things get darker in the upper atmosphere the upper horizons now I know I'm working around some trees here um, but getting in your basic values first um, is really crucial before even getting into too much detail you'll see um, I will start working on the portion of this above the owl's uh, wings and uh, then I'll, I'll move on from there but usually I like to kind of work over the whole painting before I get too detailed. So I'm really with a light pressure um, just kind of working a little bit of these uh, values um, around the moon and you will notice that I will keep it lighter around the moon and also notice that even now with that lavender I'm getting um, warmer in color temperature. Purples are a warm blue actually. Uh, they have more red in it than a regular blue would have. So that's why I'm using a little bit of uh, the lavender colors closer to the moon because the moon has a sense of warmth. Light typically does. And uh, so that's why you'll notice the color temperature changing and the value of the uh, color changing. So once again, this is real time. I'm just um, working, kind of scumbling uh, in, not using hard pressure, keeping it light so that I'm not um, taking away my ability to layer things. That's one thing you want to remember with pastel painting is if you overfill the tooth of your paper or your surface, even if it's an unsanded surface, you're going to not only lose the layering ability, but you're going to start muddying your colors. And pastels have this wonderful vibrancy to them because of the um, substance that it's made out of. They actually have little particles that kind of sparkle. And if you over layer, you're actually going to muddy them and you're going to decrease that beautiful color intensity that pastels have inherently. And now, of course, I'm adding the moon, um, more of a yellowy tone. And sometimes you'll see paintings where moons are white, uh, but I actually like to give them a little bit of warmth. And here I'm adding a little bit of a darker value. Um, I don't want to give too much of this, but just a hint to give it a bit more warmth. And also, too, I don't like to have my moon as a perfect circle. I like to just have it more of a general circular shape. I hope that makes sense. And I, I don't want a, a, a line around it. It's It's got a lost edge, okay? It's really an edge more than it's a line. If you're one of my patrons, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We had a lesson on that. And so um, now I'm adding a little bit of that warmth as a glow around the moon. Keep that in mind because that's a little bit of the strategy I use with the fireflies as well. And um, I do it with a bit of a different technique, but it's the same concept. Now again, I'm using such a light touch, just getting a little bit of that glow. Um, I think I do maybe a little bit of blending with my, in a minute you'll see me, or in a little while when I get to the trees, I use a piece of chamois cloth I've been using lately that works great to blend. You can see it over there to the left. And uh, now I'm adding a little bit of that pink um, that I mentioned earlier where I was talking about the lavender and just a little bit of a warmer tone and not only is it um, something that really does happen you know with the color being a little warmer and a little lighter in value around the moon it's also just a neat artistic license I just wanted to add more color to this and uh, not have it just a typical white moon blue sky so it's a little bit more interesting 
And now I'm working on some of the darker values, which are the distant trees. And I get in my darks first. If you've been following my channel much or other pastel instructors, with pastel, which is actually kind of similar to acrylic and oil, we typically get our darker layers down first. It's like a good foundation. It needs something dark, even if you have a rich, bold, brighter, lighter value color um, for something, usually it needs something um, to rest upon <laughs> to give it contrast and to let that color show up. So I am getting in my darker values. This is still one of the pastels from the Unison set. It, like I said, it has some nice darks. This is like a really dark, almost like a bluish green. And even though I'm going to layer other colors on top of it, it's just a good base. Now you see how I'm doing kind of a zigzaggy um, stroke. That's because I kind of wanted these to be like evergreen trees. And that's kind of a neat way to have like little um, zigzaggy shelves to them or layers and try to make it uh, versatile. You don't want every branch um, the same distance apart. So you're giving it a little bit of um, um, versatility to the branches. And also, too, I, I can't remember if I mentioned this yet or not, I'm working from imagination here other than the owl. Now, the owl is this gorgeous barn owl. I believe they're called a barn owl. Um, there's also a barred owl, but I think this is a barn owl. And they're just gorgeous. They were in the movie The Labyrinth, if you saw that many years ago. Oh, I loved that movie when I was younger. Um, and I found the photo on pmp-art.com. I talk about that site a lot because I found this is very helpful to me. I've, I'll share a little bit of my story here. Uh, well, let me, do, let me wait to share that until I show you right now what I'm doing. This is the chamois cloth that I mentioned that I just kind of stumbled upon this technique. I had some chamois cloth and um, I just tried it and it worked. So now do you see how that is actually taking away kind of the the light color of the paper it's really getting more of a solidness to those trees and uh, I did blow there okay and I blew it all over my iPad so also too there is a little bit of a disadvantage to working flat like this I prefer to work standing up but I know often I can sit and show you my pastels better if I have it flat. I ask you guys opinion in many videos and a lot of you really liked it. Now this is the better way <laughs> to remove your pastel dust is just to tap it. Have something beside you where you can just tap it and that seems to work pretty good. So I'm going to continue to use um, the chamois cloth just to lightly uh, blend it in. I'm in a, a light touch again. I'm not overdoing this. Um, I'll go back to talking about the owl and PMP in a minute. But um, remember again, I was doing this from imagination and I wanted to uh, create a composition where those trees almost look like they were um, hugging the moon, reaching up to the moon. And I just thought it was a really neat way to do that rather than just having them go straight up. That would have been kind of boring. So um, that's something I think you get better at. Not that I'm an expert. You get better at the more that you do it is um, coming up with interesting compositions. That's some other videos I have on my Patreon page. Now I have uh, general shapes of the trees and the sky in, but now what I'm doing is some negative painting. It's actually kind of like a video I did recently on sky holes. I'm carving into the trees rather than making the branches, the positive shapes extend, I'm carving in negative shapes in random places. Again, you don't want samey samey consistency. So I'm, and, and you can just kind of tap it off if an edge looks too rough. I don't like to blend with my fingers much, but you can kind of just tap things. Now right there I did, I, I knew I had that, um, that blue in the background and my chamois cloth was, um, I guess not handy, so I just use my finger. And I do darken this a little bit and play around with that a more. But you can already see, there I'm giving it a little bit more uh, value and color there. Um, you can already see how uh, a general background is taking shape. Now because this is the background, I don't want to overdo detail or value. I know the trees are dark because it's night and they're a vertical structure. Most things that are vertical are going to be darker. And but by, by the way, a sky behaves very similarly at night to the way it does in the daytime. You know, usually we have darker things up in the heavens at the horizon, except around the light source like the moon. Um, okay, now I'm going to talk about how I'm getting in these claws for the owl. I'm using some Giaconda soft pastel pencils. I don't use soft pastel pencils a lot um, because I prefer to use the pastels, but 
I had covered up my drawing with the clear gesso and the marble dust and I kind of lost uh, visuals of where the feet were. I couldn't really remember where they were so I was looking back at the actual reference photo to remind myself where the, the claws were. And I am going to speed up the section on the feet here, but I used the pastel pencils again to reestablish the feet. And then I also used uh, a darker one to kind of fill them in. I knew their value was darker. Once again, we like to get the darks down first in pastel painting. They did have some highlights on them and some lighter areas like, you know, where the reflection of the moon was. So uh, I right now notice how high contrast they are. They're the darkest thing with the background light, but that contrast will reduce uh, by the time that I, you know, fill in the darks in the background. His feet won't stand out quite as much as they do now. Mm. And here I'm working on the background a little bit more. Once again, working from imagination, but kind of following my watercolor uh, beginnings that I had made. And it may seem a bit dark. I mean, my watercolor uh, underpainting doesn't look that dark. But once again, this is the same principle with pastels that I get my darks down first and then gradually build the lights, lighter values, and the color. And now I had to tape it down because my watercolor paper kept curling. It does flatten out by the time you're finished usually. I also, even though it's from imagination, I have a general idea of how trees behave and grow. And some of that's just from observation and painting multiple trees, but some of it's from learning a little bit more about the science of it, the Fibonacci sequence. I do have another video on, um, I think it's called the golden ratio and the grand design. I have actually, a, I think, another special lesson that I did for my patrons on that. And you may have seen my patron notification earlier in this video, but by the way, your Patreon support, God bless you patrons, is really helping me to dedicate more time to these videos and have better equipment. And once again, my love and my passion is to be able to share these free videos. And also, like I'm doing now, being able to offer some real time. I know there's people out there who want to paint and you don't have the resources to do it. And certainly now with COVID-19, you know, we are all having to find online ways to do things. So God bless you. Thank you for your $5 a month. It's really helping this channel grow. And uh, I do have a goal of having an assistant one day. I'm, I'm a one-man show. <laughs> the artist, the filmer, uh, the editor. Uh, you know, I have my Etsy shop. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, don't know. I don't mean it's not like I'm complaining. It's awesome to be able to do what you love. But I wish I could clone myself. So back to thank you, patrons. Um, some of my patrons actually... Um, just support me to, to help this channel grow. And some patrons are um, loving the extra instruction you get. So I have a little weekly schedule. It's almost like school and uh, it's really a lot of fun. So anyway, um, notice that I've added some of these branches in, but I know I don't want to have too much detail or anything really competing too much with the owl. The owl is the focal point in this. I have another video on focal point, by the way. Oh, and also too, if you ever wanna find a video on a certain subject, you've seen it before, and I've had people sometimes go, I can't find that video where you talked about, you know, uh, packaging up your pastel paintings, uh, storage or something. You can go to the top of the, well, actually you don't even have to do that. You can go into YouTube, in YouTube search bar, type in Monet Cafe, it does have the little hyphen after the E, uh, but I don't think it matters. And then what you're looking for, storage, and the videos will populate. So if you think you've seen something before, you hear me mention it in one of these videos, you can just do a search like that within um, YouTube. So um, again, I am not wanting to keep the, uh, or I'm not wanting to compete with the central uh, focal point, which is the owl. So I'm just kind of going real gentle and then I'm going to reduce the contrast um, around the, the background portion that's around the owl. Right now it looks kind of busy, you see, but when I get the other values in, I really subdue that so that he stands out the most. And I do apologize that I missed some owl footage of painting the owl. I don't do a whole lot more to this owl, by the way. Um, I'm, I think I do add some more maybe some lavenders, but I love the translucency of his wings. And the way I accomplished that was um, I just used, if you look at the wing part that's in shadow, it's really just kind of a neutral, 
almost lavender. And then I added some greens and I added some more warm colors because that, that moon is shining through his wings. But literally in the photo, the reference photo, because it's on PMP, um, the site that I use, I don't think I'm supposed to share it right here, right beside my my demo that I'm doing in the video. Uh, if it's my own reference photo, I can. But that's why I mentioned I will provide a clickable link where you can go to this image. If you want to open it up, find it, download it, you can do that and, and look at it while I paint. Um, I do think you have to become a PMP uh, member, which is free. Um, and I recommend it. It's got some uh, awesome reference images. That's uh, one of the reasons that I started using it early on as I was, oh, I mentioned way early in this video, I was getting into my story. <laughs> but um, my uh, situation was that I didn't have the financial resources or the time. I, you know, at one point in my life, I was a single mom with three boys and um, trying to fit in art as therapy for craziness in life. And I just didn't have those resources. I certainly couldn't go out to uh, neat places and take photos. I would take photos where I could, but like if I wanted to paint an owl, I would have to resort to finding uh, copyright free reference images. And so many years ago, I stumbled across the PMP site. It used to be called paintmyphoto.com. So that's why it's called PMP art.com. So um, once again, if I use photos from there, I can provide you the link, but I can't like show it right beside the painting. So as you can see, I've just been gradually getting in some of the darkness of those trees and branches and blending them a bit with my chamois cloth. And I'm, I'm kind of just trying to figure out where things would be. I know it's there's going to be a lot of dark back there. Um, so this is going to be the end of part one. I'm at 21, 22 minutes right now. Part two, I will be finishing that extending branch, the mouse and the fireflies. So please comment. Let me know if you like these shorter formats like this. And uh, then I'll put them all together in one playlist. All right, guys, I'm excited about this. I hope you liked it. Thanks for being here and happy painting.